Welcome to Basics of Starfinder Tactical Rules Part 2, Cover. Cover may be the most important element of tactical combat. It will determine where you move, where your opponents move, and where is the safest place to be on any given turn. If a target is behind any object that might hinder your ability to attack them, then they are going to have cover from you. Determining cover and line of effect may seem complex at first, but is very simple in practice. To start, select any corner of the square that your figure occupies, and then draw lines from it to all four corners of your target. Then, you just ask yourself two simple questions. Do any of these lines pass through a solid object, or through a border that would block your line of effect to the target? For example, this could be something like a wall, a force field, or even a stack of crates. And second, do any of these lines pass through a square that is occupied by another creature? If the answer to either of these questions is yes, then that target has some form of cover from your attack. Let's take a look at each of these conditions a little closer. In our first example, Isef is aiming at an enemy. We select one of his corners, and draw lines to all four corners of his target, and then ask those two questions. Are any of the lines blocked by an object? Do any of the lines pass through a square that is occupied by another creature? Here, we see one of the targeting lines pass through a wall, and therefore the monster has cover from Isef's attack. In our next example, Navasia runs to the corner of the wall and targets the monster. Again, we draw lines from one of her corners to all of her target's corners, and we ask those same two questions. And this time, we see that none of her targeting lines pass through an obstacle or through a square that is occupied by a creature, and therefore there is no cover on this attack. In our third example, Raya joins the fight. We draw target lines and review the two questions. This time we see two of her target lines pass through a square that is occupied by an ally, Quig the Yasoki. So the monster has cover from her attack too. Last, let's check Quig. We draw the target lines from one of his corners to all four of his target's corners, and again we ask those two questions. Are any of the lines blocked by an object? Do any of the lines pass through a square occupied by another creature? In this case, the answer to both questions is no, so the monster does not have cover from Quig's attack. Once you have determined the target has cover from you, the next step is to identify what kind of cover they have. If you do not have any line of effect to your target at all, they have total cover and may not be attacked. For example, there is a solid wall between you and your target. You may still have a line of sight to the target, if it's behind a wall that is transparent, or certain kinds of force fields for example, but they still have total cover and you will not be able to attack them directly. Instead, you would be attacking the wall in front of them. If there is only minimal line of effect to the target, for example, they're hiding behind a wall with a narrow gun port in it, it's possible to attack them, but it's going to be very difficult. In a case like that, the target has improved cover and receives a plus 8 bonus to both kinetic armor class and energy armor class, as well as a plus 4 bonus to reflex saves. In most cases, you will be dealing with targets with at least half of their body hidden behind an object that grants them cover. An example of this might be a soldier who's kneeling behind a metal crate with her rifle propped atop it to take a shot at you. Most of her body is hidden behind the crate, but her head, arms, upper torso are all still vulnerable. In situations like this, the target has normal cover and receives a plus 4 bonus, to both kinetic armor class and energy armor class, as well as a plus two bonus to reflex saves. If more than half of the target's body is vulnerable to an attack, they only have partial cover. 
This usually occurs when there is something small or incidental in the way. A thigh-high pile of scrap in a junkyard, or a chair in a laboratory, it's enough to make your attack more difficult than if that target was in the wide open, but not as difficult as the previously discussed cover types. In a case of partial cover, your target only receives a plus 2 bonus to kinetic armor class and energy armor class, and a plus 1 bonus to reflex saves. There is one special type of cover that we also need to discuss, and that's soft cover. Soft cover occurs when the obstacle that is blocking your attack is another creature, which could be any kind of creature. It could be your ally, your enemy, a confused robot, whatever. Soft cover works like normal cover, except it provides no bonus to reflex saves. Therefore, Soft Cover only grants a plus 4 bonus to Kinetic Armor Class and Energy Armor Class. Also note, the GM might determine that Soft Cover provides greater bonuses in certain occasions, such as a target who is holding a hostage in front of them as a shield. An easy way to remember the effects of the different cover types is to always start with Normal Cover, which is plus 4 to both types of AC, and plus 2 to reflex saves, and if the target has significantly more cover than that benchmark, you double the bonuses to plus 8 to both types of armor class, and plus 4 to reflex saves, and if they have significantly less cover than that normal benchmark, then you have the bonuses to plus 2 to both kinds of armor class, and plus 1 to reflex saves. And always remember, Soft cover works exactly like normal cover, except it does not grant any bonus to reflex saves. There are a few other special considerations we need to discuss. The first is low obstacles. Low obstacles are any objects that are less than half the height of your target, and they will only provide benefits of cover in certain situations. There are two criteria that need to be met in order for a target to receive the benefits of cover from a low obstacle. The first criteria says the target must be within 30 feet of the low obstacle, and the second criteria says the target must be closer to the low obstacle than the attacker. In the case of a tie, the defender wins and gains the benefits of cover. If either of these criteria are not met, the target does not receive any benefits of cover from the low obstacle. Let's illustrate this with a couple of examples. Here we have Navasi who's taking aim at a monster. Between them is a computer terminal, and we'll assume that since the monster is a large creature that takes up four squares, this computer terminal is less than half its height, and therefore is considered a low obstacle. In the first example, we see that the monster is two squares away from the computer terminal, and Navasi is only one square away from it. So let's review the two criteria for when low obstacles grant the benefits of cover. First, is the target within 30 feet of the low obstacle? Yes, the monster is only 10 feet away from that computer terminal. And second, is the target closer to the low obstacle than the attacker? In this example, the monster is not closer to the computer terminal than Navasi. Therefore, since both criteria are not met, the monster does not receive any benefits of cover from the computer terminal. In our second example, the monster moves a little closer, and now is only one square away from the computer terminal. That satisfies the first criteria of being within 30 feet, but what about the second? Is the target closer to the low obstacle than the attacker? This time they are both 5 feet away from the computer terminal, but the defender wins the tie so, the monster does receive the benefits of partial cover from the computer terminal. Another item we should discuss is what happens when a target has both cover and concealment. The first thing you should know is that an object that provides cover does not also provide concealment. For example, a goblin is hunkered down behind a desk and you can't see him. The desk is blocking both line of effect and line of sight. So does this mean that the goblin gets both a cover bonus to their armor class and a 20 or 50% mischance due to concealment? And the answer to that is no. 
Concealment is provided when line of sight is hindered, but not line of effect. So if a square grants cover, such as the desk in this example, it does not also provide concealment. And no targeting lines from Navassi are running through squares that provide concealment here, so the goblin only receives the benefits of cover. However, what if the goblin also set off a smoke grenade? Now Navassi's targeting lines run first through the squares that grant concealment because of smoke, and then to a square that grants cover because of the desk. In this case, the goblin does receive the benefits of both a cover bonus to its armor class and a 20% mischance applied after a hit is rolled because of the concealment provided by the smoke. But the key point to remember is that a specific object that provides cover does not also provide concealment, even if it does block line of sight. If there is a concealment mischance, is going to need to come from a square that only hinders line of sight, but does not hinder line of effect. The other special consideration that we should make note of is what happens when there are multiple sources of cover between an attacker and their target. For example, there could be two different objects blocking the target lines that are being drawn from your corner to the four corners of your target, or both an object and a creature may be in the path of your attack. In cases where there are multiple sources of cover, the advantages of cover do not stack, which means that the bonuses provided by each individual piece of cover do not add together. Instead, you would review how much of the target is exposed to an attack even after going past all the different objects in his way. You would determine this exactly the same way that you identified whether cover is total cover, or improved cover, or normal cover, or partial cover. Even with multiple sources of cover, if less than half of the target is vulnerable to an attack, then it has normal cover. If more than half of the target is vulnerable to an attack, it only has partial cover. To illustrate this, let's review one example. You've come to the climactic battle of your adventure. You confront the final boss, David Allen Greer, in the galley of a starship. Before you can attack, he summons his telekinetic powers and causes all the pots and pans and plates in that galley to levitate from the ground and swirl around him making a shield. Now, each individual pot or pan is an obstacle that could grant cover from an attack, but you wouldn't add the bonuses from every one of these objects together to provide that cover bonus. Instead, you would review how much of the notorious DAG is still exposed to an attack. If there is less than half of his body exposed, he has normal cover. If more than half of his body is exposed, he only has partial cover. If none of him is exposed, then he has total cover. Again, the bonuses do not add together. Instead, you review how much of the target is vulnerable and provide the bonuses only once. In this video, we discussed the basics of cover. Anytime an object is in between an attacker and their target, the target receives a bonus to their defenses due to cover. Cover comes in five varieties. Total cover, where there is no line of effect at all to the target and therefore may not be attacked directly. There's improved cover, where only a very small portion of the target is exposed to damage. For example, a head leaning out from the edge of a wall to make a perception check. And then there's normal cover, where at least half of the target is behind an obstacle. And last, partial cover, where less than half of the target is behind an object. An office chair or something incidental, perhaps. And also keep in mind, if the obstacle counts as low, then some special rules apply. There's also one special type of cover, and that is soft cover. Soft cover is granted when the object that's providing the cover is a living creature. Soft cover works the same way as normal cover, except it does not provide any bonus to reflex defense. I guess the rules assume that a creature is going to try to jump out of the way of that fireball too. Also keep in mind that if a square grants the benefits of cover, that same square does not also grant concealment. But other squares between an attacker and their target could provide concealment.
And also remember, cover bonuses do not stack. The target only benefits from the highest bonus possible. With that, we'll bring this module to a close. If you found this video helpful, please give us a like, and don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss out on any of our future videos. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or send them through our Twitter or Facebook pages. If you'd like to use some of the maps that we feature in our videos in your own games, you can find them at Maps of Mastery in Zero Hour. Links to those sites may be found in the description. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you soon with more basics for your favorite games.